Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. That, what you see right there, that's not supposed to happen. But what happened? Well, that's what we're going to cover today. So, Singapore Airlines Boeing 777 conducted an automatic landing in Munich. Shortly before touchdown, the airplane slightly blanked to the left around 3.5 degrees. Thereafter, it touched down, the rollout mode of the aircraft engaged, the aircraft started to veer off to the left of the runway, came back onto the center line, off to the right again, where it came to a full stop. What happened? With that said, welcome back to Aviation ABC. Today, it's all about the localizer, well, and the ILS, because I would say those two, they belong together. So, without further ado, let's get started. Before, smash that like, subscribe, and set the bell. Now, let's get started. So, an ILS stands for an Instrument Landing System. The ILS is used uh, on a daily basis for nearly every approach as a backup and for bad weather situations, for outer landings. The localized antenna looks like that and is always situated at the end of the runway you're landing on. It's built up out of pair directional antennas. These antennas send out two frequencies, one at 90 Hz to the left side and one at 150 Hz to the right side. These two signals are directed such that they intercept at a specific course to glide down on the center line of the runway. The final approach course is always stated in our charts, looking like that right here. The indication is presented to us either on an ADI, an HSI or PFD. I'm going to put some pictures up here. The indications to us will then either be bars or diamond, varies on uh, which instrument you're using. The bar or diamond represents the center line in that case, so if the bar or the diamond is to the right, which means you are to the left, so you have to alter your course to the right to intercept the course again. And when it's centered, you got to fly the course stated on the chart without any wind. If there is wind, you would have to regard a wind correction angle, meaning the nose, so the heading of the aircraft, may not be directly the approach course, but the track is then. Hope you follow me here. Localized antennas get more and more sensitive the closer you come to the runway. They are built so if you come down to the threshold, the runway, the width of the cone is around 700 feet. So 300 feet per right and left. Which means when you're being 350 feet to the right at the center line, you would have a full scale deflection, so two dots. One dot is already go around. Well, then there's the glide slope antenna. That one is positioned right next to the touchdown zone and looks like that. It uses again the two transitions at 150Hz and 90Hz, but this time they flip vertically. So the 150Hz is the bottom part and the 90Hz is the top part. The middle of the trajectory will then basically define the glide path to a 3 degree glide path angle. That's the most common way in the most approaches all over the world, but they can vary between a few degrees. This is again indicated to us by our instruments. ADI, HSI, PFD. Having the diamond on the top part of the scale means you're below the glide, which means you have to shallow your descent or even have to stop descending for a second to recapture the glide slope and to then go down with the tra 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 trajectory of three degrees. To then be always on the glide and that should always correspond to the PAPI, which uh, is most of the time the same glide angle as your ILS. To receive those signals, so the localizer or the glide slope, we have our frequency stated on the chart. We tune that, which is coupled with the glide slope um, frequency, which is at a lot higher frequency level. In addition to receiving a localizer frequency, we get a ILS facility identification code, which is also stated on the chart in Morse code. So we listen before we approach, we listen to that Morse code to identify that we are, have tuned the right ILS and that we are receiving the right ILS, which is really important because airports can have various ILSs. So it's really important that you connect it to the right one and you receiving the right one. So I hope you have a little deeper understanding now of ILS, glide slope, localizer. Now let's get back to the Boeing 777 issue there. During automatic landing, the autoflight system uses the glide slope and the localizer to fly down the aircraft to the ground where it then enters an automatic flare mode and as soon as it touches the ground it goes into rollout mode. Which means it follows the trajectory of the localizer to keep the center line of the runway. Till still stop. Do you say still stop? Stand still. Till stand still. Thanks Adam. As always. But here's what's gone wrong on that day. If low visibility procedures are active on an airport, the traffic controllers 
won't let the taxiing planes too close to the runway like in good weather conditions. That's why we have holding positions called cut one holding, cut two, cut three holding positions. So to perform an auto landing, all planes need to stop at the cut three stop bar, which is a bit farther away from the runway than usual. And that all is done to not disrupt the localizer signal for the landing aircrafts or for the incoming aircrafts. Especially in the final stages during approaches, because like I said, the signal gets more sensitive and more sensitive the closer you come to the antennas. And on the runway, you're pretty close. And here's the problem now. The pilots decided to do an automatic landing in cut one weather conditions, so the airport wasn't applying any special separation for automatic landings. The pilots didn't advise the tower to uh, that they're gonna perform an automatic landing. Shortly before touchdown, the tower cleared another aircraft for takeoff, not being aware of the Boeing 777 in the back doing an automatic landing. The aircraft taking off then interfered with the localizer signal, bringing the Boeing 777 to the initial bank of 3.5 degrees to the left, and then the false rollout guidance, which made the Boeing 777 go left of the runway, back on it again, because pilots took over control as soon as they realized something is wrong, and then back on the runway into the right again. What a bummer, isn't it? So always, aviation, communication is key. That concludes today's topic and our incident of uh, this week in Aviation ABC. If you're wondering why we didn't do a J and K, well, we didn't find any interesting topics, unfortunately. But if you have some, let us know down below in the comments and we're gonna cover them to a later point, I guess, right, Adam? Yeah. With that said, have a great day, everyone. I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.